this is Katie. In today's video, I want to talk about how I've been coping with my recent health issues and also with a recent breakup. Um, and so I want to tell you some personal stuff about me, what I've been doing and uh, what I want to change because honestly, the coping strategies that I've been using are wildly unhealthy, like trash strategies. And so I just want to talk to you guys not to be judged. <laughs> But just be open with you guys and tell you, um, you know, some of the things I've been struggling with and then some of the things that I have been changing in terms of coping with my mental health. So if you are interested in this video, I really hope that you're subscribed and I hope that you keep watching. Okay, so I'm also going to like get ready a little bit um, while I'm talking just a tiny bit. I just got out of the shower. So... A lot of you guys know I got sick in November with an esophagus disorder. I have a liver tumor benign, but it's pushing on my stomach. I have acid reflux. I've been dealing with a bunch of things. In the first couple months that I was really, really sick and not eating, I was miserable. And then like after like a couple months, I kind of felt like I was doing okay. I kind of felt like I was handling things that like God just completely took over and that I was able to handle things more. Even though I was barely eating, I was dropping weight, I was sick, I still felt like I could handle things more. Um, then, I have earrings here. I feel like I always need to wear earrings. I feel like I'm not like dressed, you know what I mean? Anyway, then uh, a couple months ago, and I didn't tell this to you guys because some things I keep private, right? But there are definitely some things that I wanna be more open and vulnerable with you guys, obviously not to get judged or to get like hated on or to get hate comments. Honestly, if you feel like you wanna leave a hate comment, you can just leave, maybe don't do that. Um, but hopefully these videos, you know, we're just connecting, right? And I'm just being honest with you guys, like you're my friends, cause that's how I see you guys. So um, there are some things that I want to keep private, but there are a bunch of things that I wanna share with you that are still really personal. And so one thing that I did not tell you, I don't think, I think I may have mentioned it on Instagram, on my stories, um, but I went through a pretty bad breakup a couple months back and it like completely flipped my life upside down. And the thing that like, there's a few things that really bum me out about it, but the main one right now that I wanted to talk about is like mentally, I felt like I was doing good. I felt like I was doing good before I met him. I felt like I was doing good while we were dating. Um, and then when we broke up, I let that and I choose my words carefully I really don't like to blame other people or other situations for how I handle them right like I can unless it uh triggers my mental health issues which are you know way less uh under my control um besides that like I can control my reaction to things right but obviously sometimes things are harder so like when I went through my breakup and I was still pretty sick it just like threw me for a loop and completely turned my life upside down I really thought that I really thought that like I was going to end up with him. Um, and this was a couple months back. And basically after that, um, this is why I want to talk about coping because the coping strategies I used were really, really bad. I basically started drinking a lot and um, just dating all the time after him. Like I would just basically just go on a bunch of like first dates, go to a bar, get a couple drinks. That was like every couple nights for the first few weeks. And... I basically like lost myself and that's obviously not good, right? Like obviously I don't need to be told that drinking all the time and just dating to go on dates is bad. Obviously I know that, um, but oh, there's dogs by the way, you might hear them. Um, and I might, I'm trying to be like a little quiet because there are other people around. Um, but yeah, so obviously I know that what I was doing was not healthy, but it was like at the time I didn't care. You know, like when you get so low that you literally just don't care, you just want to be distracted. That's basically what it was. Um, the drinking and the dating and the like going back to talking to exes that I know I shouldn't talk to anymore. Um, I didn't work as much. Like I have a lot of projects going on and I basically just like stopped doing the other projects and only did the bare minimum of YouTube the last few months. I tried really hard to stay consistent with my videos um, because this is my job and I love my job, but I barely did anything else. Like, and I let that happen with the breakup. Obviously, it's easy to just blame him or blame the breakup, right? But in reality, I can, I do have a partial, at least partial control of how I reacted to him breaking up with me. It was a very random breakup. I was not expecting it at all. It was like out of nowhere. Um, and it really like, 
threw me for a loop and I almost like took advantage of the excuse and I spiraled and I just did not care. I didn't care that I was spiraling. Um, and so I was just doing a bunch of like unhealthy stuff and oh, I just realized I had lotion on my nose this whole time. Um, and that was, you know, a couple months ago and you guys know how big I am on discipline, not motivation. And this is the thicket stick it by NYX, by the way, in the color cool ash brown. She's like a tinted brow gel. Um, and this is the e.l.f. Big Mood Mascara in the color black. Um, both of these are drugstore and they're pretty good. Um, yeah. So, oh, the motivation thing. So you guys know that like, I'm a pretty big believer in you don't need motivation to get something done. Obviously it makes it easier, right? If we feel like we want to do it, but the reality is, is if we have true discipline and like standards for ourselves, then we don't need the motivation. We can just know that something is best for us and then do it. We don't need the feeling in between, right? I feel like motivation is such like a, like it's so normal, but it's not necessary. And so I think people use it as an excuse a lot. Like, oh, I'm not motivated to go to the gym. Well, it doesn't matter. <laughs> a lot of people who work out every day aren't motivated every day to go. They don't want to go every day, but you do it anyway because you're disciplined. You have your goals. You have like the things that you know are healthy for you or right for you or best for you or going to help other people, whatever. So I am such a believer in that. But the last couple of months, it's like, I just, I didn't care. Didn't even care that I even knew what was best for me. Um, didn't even care to think what was healthy. Just didn't. Um, and it sucks, but it's just, it's just what happened. So basically my coping strategies after my breakup were not healthy. There were a couple times that I like knew that it wasn't healthy. Right. And I was thinking, okay, what else can I do? What else can I do? But I never stuck with it. You know, like I, like during the breakup, I also like, I didn't take my medicine, my acid reflux medicine for like two months. I stopped taking like my vitamins. I um, barely was writing in my um, planner that you guys know I love my planner, but I basically like stopped writing in it. I just stopped caring about any of it. Um, and I just wanted to distract myself from feeling sad. And I did it in like the least healthy ways possible. I was like, I'm just gonna meet strangers and I'm gonna drink and I just didn't care. I just wanted to be distracted. That's what it was. I wanted to be distracted from my pain. That is not healthy. Um, and I know that again, please don't judge me. We're not here to judge, right? We're here to share. Okay. Um, again, if you hear noises, it's because I'm staying with my friends and they're awake. It's, I don't even know what time it is. It's still pretty early. It's 8 49. Um, so we're talking about coping strategies. Uh, I'm not even saying drinking and dating are inherently bad. I'm not saying that I'm saying if you're doing them to distract yourself, that's when like they might not be as great, right? Cause like I still want to date, um, but I'm going to be a little bit more selective um, with who I like go grab a drink with or something. Um, and the same with alcohol. Like, I don't know if I want to completely stop drinking, but I at least need to cut it back. And those are not healthy coping strategies. And sometimes we just got to be like, you know what? That's what I did. I did the unhealthy things, but now I'm changing. And sometimes we need that discipline, right? So the healthy coping strategies that some I already started and some I want to start with you guys. Um, I've been walking, which is really cool. And I've been walking about a mile and a half or so just to, you know, kind of start out and kind of see how I like it. And I really like it. I've been enjoying my walks. I have like wireless earbuds and I'm listening to music and stuff. Um, and then I also bought a bunch of like cute, like exercise clothes, you guys. You know how often I wear black and white, right? Look at these shorts. These are New Balance from TJ Maxx. Are these not the cutest things you've ever seen? Like the most like neon green. And then I also have, these don't match. Um, this is yellow, this is green, but I have this top. Um, that's New Balance from TJ Maxx, $15. But like how cute. I feel like the bright colors are just like fun right now. Yeah, so I think walking for me I really like being outside. I really like being outside. And I think just moving my body. I know so many people are like, oh, exercise is great. Endorphins, endorphins. For me, I don't get the endorphins when I exercise. I don't know what those people are talking about. I do not experience that. We're all so different, right? Like we are all so different. Even if something is common, 
it still does not mean that everyone has it. And so I've never really felt endorphins from exercising, um, but I do really enjoy being outside and I enjoy moving my body. I do definitely feel better physically and even a tiny bit mentally if I wake up and one of the first things I do is go for a walk. I'm just gonna put a tiny bit of bronzer on. I've been using this pixie um, thing. Is it focusing? It's supposed to have like really good autofocus on this camera. Let's see. Um, but I'm just gonna use a tiny bit of the bronzer, like tiny, tiny, tiny. Yeah, so I've been walking. I think that's a very healthy like coping thing. Like if you feel upset or something, um, go outside. Like the sun is so good for you. Like it, it really is. I know there's some people who like the sun is bad for you. The sun is really good for you. Um, and even if you don't like being in the sun, um, but you can still be in the shade, you know, like, but just being outside, there's not being outside, being in nature, you know, like I have gone for a couple hikes recently. I went paddle boarding the other day, actually. I've been wanting to like go out and do more things. So I think for me, these are some of the coping strategies that I'm switching to, right? Drinking less for sure. <laughs> Definitely drinking less. Dating more. And I've been do I've already been doing this part, but like dating more like on purpose because I did just have a few weeks that I was just like whoever wanted to hang out and just literally like go to a bar for a drink. Like I just, I didn't care. Like that's, I didn't care. Um, but I'm just going to be more selective because I, I'm not going to stop dating. I want to get married one day, you know, and I definitely do feel like I am moved past my breakup enough to properly date and to properly like have the mental space for a guy. Um, but I'm also going to like watch out for red flags a little bit more, you know, that kind of stuff. Um, so do those things properly and not use them as crutches, not use them as, um, distractions. Um, and so my glasses are dirty. And then the other things I did start walking more. Um, I basically want to walk almost every day and I've been basically doing that already for the last like week or two. So that's been great. And I really do like it. I really like waking up and walking. Um, before the breakup, I was in such a good habit of waking up, like writing in my little notebook thing, my, what is it called? My planner. Um, and, uh, taking my medicine, having a protein shake. I was like really in the habit of doing all of that, have my morning routine, um, like reading my Bible or devotional or something. Like I was doing all that. And then the breakup again, like I just let it spiral me. Like I was just completely out of control. Um, and again, I know that some people are going to see that as a reason. Well, I went through a breakup. That is why I spiraled and I get that and I hear it. But I also do think that at some point we got to take responsibility for how we're acting and how we're reacting to a situation. And it is okay to cry. It is okay to rest. It is okay to uh, be angry and all those things, whatever, but not to keep having those emotions. You know, there is a point where you got to understand that it's something that happens. You're not going to change it and live with it and move on and not move on, like ignore it, but just more like, I've just had a hard time with this, but it's like my life still matters even though he left me. I have a hard time with that idea. You know, guys, I have a lot of abandonment issues and so it, it triggers a lot of my abandonment issues when someone out of nowhere disappears. Like he broke up with me and it, it was really rough. But again, I really feel like I'm past that. So besides the walking, the other coping strategies that I want to start implementing just in my day-to-day -day life, whether it's I'm feeling anxious or I'm depressed or something happened. And so I feel anxious and depressed because sometimes nothing happened and my brain just hurts, but kind of any negative thing, or if I really feel like doing something to distract myself negatively, right? Like if I feel like just, Oh, I don't care about today. I'm not even going to work. I'm just going to drink or anything like that. If I feel any of those things, some of the coping strategies that I want to implement, I mean, again, I've already been walking. I want to, I need to start reading my Bible more. I need to do that every day. I need to do that consistently. I really don't like that. I don't do that. Um, I also have a couple devotionals. Um, and I might even want to start like journaling and like writing certain things, but I really want to get in the habit of if I feel like I just want to distract myself. If I feel like, Oh, life sucks. Who cares? I don't care that I start praying, that I open my Bible and, or that I start writing and, or that I do a devotional. I think that one of the things that I struggle with, and I actually heard this the other day on some like Instagram thing. And if this is your first video of mine, by the way, um, hi, my thoughts are all over the place. <laughs> 
So um, I hope this video makes sense. And I, um, yeah, but, and if you just want to hear the coping strategies, you know, fast forward five minutes, because <laughs> I do talk in like a bunch of different circles. But one of the things I heard on Instagram the other day was, um, or a few weeks ago, um, oh, what was it? Hold on. Where's my planner? Because I wrote it down. Okay. So I have this planner from, um, Simple Self. I love it. I think it's awesome. Um, but I wrote down this thing I saw on Instagram the other day. Which part did I? Oh, here we go. That someone on Instagram talked about who is sitting on the throne of your heart. And so it's kind of like the idea of who are you false idolizing? Who are you focused on instead of God? Because God needs to be sitting on the throne of our heart, right? Like if you are saved, that is the most important thing that God is the only thing that you are truly giving your life to. Obviously we can love other people and love other things and do other things, but that main, main, main focus needs to be on God. And I have lost that a little bit. I know I'm still saved. That's not it. I just mean that I have been focusing on so many other things for basically instant gratification of distraction. Honestly, that's what I've been doing. And you guys know how much I hate that. And I talk about that all the time, like to not do it, it's not healthy. But I struggle with it too, I think we all do. Um, and so I wrote down, what is sitting on the throne of my heart and giving direction? That's God's rightful place, not false idols. And so I basically made a list of all my false idols. So something that I'm focusing on, something that's hurting me, something that I'm focusing on, that's not God, you know? And so, dating um my past sometimes i just keep like focusing on certain things that happened in the past and like they become like really negative like repeating thoughts my ocd i think we've talked about this a couple times i have really severe ocd and sometimes that can take up a lot of time and a lot of my brain space so i wrote down a bunch of things um and so that could be something that could be helpful too that's why i wanted to share it obviously um i wanted to share it so that it could maybe be helpful for you too if you realize like especially if you're a christian but even if you're not like there are probably things that everyone's focusing on that's not healthy and that's not helpful and so it's like instead of doing those things there are healthier things to focus on that are god-centered right and or that are at least not taking us away from god so Back to the coping strategies. I'm gonna actually give a list now, okay? I know we're really long into the video. My friends that I'm staying with, um, they went to Hawaii a few weeks ago and they actually got me this little pineapple. Look how cute. Look how cute. Look, come on. Um, and they also got me a coloring book of Hawaii animals. You guys know how much I like to do like the sticker books and stuff. And I remembered that I really, really, really like arts and crafts. I always have, but again, I think just sometimes with my depression it's like i'd rather do something that's unhealthy and a distraction than that's healthy and a distraction that's depression that is like straight up depression if you'd rather do something unhealthy than healthy when you used to enjoy the healthy thing it sucks and so sometimes again it's not the motivation sometimes you have to push yourself so even there might be some days i don't feel like doing the healthy coping strategies but i'm gonna push myself to anyway so i have that coloring book and I just really want to get more, like get back into crafts. Like you guys know I used to crochet a lot, but I got my tendonitis, so I can't do that anymore. So there are still some crafts that I can do. I have beads to make bracelets um, and I can still do that. Um, I have the coloring book. Um, literally yesterday I was at Target with one of my friends and then I found paint. So I got acrylic paint and I got puffy paint. They call it 3D paint, but like this is puffy paint or puff paint or whatever. So I got these and um, like some brushes and um, the little thing to put the paint in and these like really thin canvases um, just to paint. I also have finger paints in the car. I also recently as a gift got a Nintendo Switch. It's like one of the nicest gifts I've ever, ever received. Um, and I have Mario Kart, so I've been playing a little bit of Mario Kart. Um, I have a bunch of books. I think that reading and learning can be such good 
like coping strategies because in reality you're bettering yourself, right? So I do have a bunch of books. I have a Kindle, but then I also do have a bunch of physical books as well. Um, I am in therapy still. I'm still in therapy on BetterHelp. I love BetterHelp so much. I do the texting option. They have like a video option, a phone option, and a like a messaging, like an IM kind of. You guys remember instant messaging? It's kind of like that. Um, and that's the option I do because it makes me feel like the most comfortable kind of, but I love my therapist. I love her. I've been seeing this particular therapist for probably four or five months and I think she's awesome and therapy a lot of you guys know for me has been such an on and off thing because I've had so many therapists that I didn't really connect with but her I really connect with I think she's awesome she helps me a lot so I think that for me I also don't want to overwhelm myself it's like I want to give myself a ton of options for things that I could do to cope and to help myself and to get myself out of a negative space if I'm thinking something negative or if I'm about to do something that's hurtful to myself, you know, but I want to have, you know, several options, but I also don't want to overwhelm myself with too many options that I like freeze, you know, and honestly for me, I don't know if this counts as coping, but it's really just for me doing anything that I know is healthier for me, healthier choices, healthier habits. I need to get back in the habit of, you know, doing my protein shake every day, which I have been doing almost every day for the past like week and a half. Um, but also I want to get back into working on my business. I really was so much for several months. I was putting in like 12, 14 hours a day and I loved it. And then just after the breakup, I just, again, like I just stopped caring about anything. And so I don't know if working counts as a coping strategy, but at least for me, because I'm growing a business and I'm doing passion projects and I'm doing things that excite me. I want to get back into doing those as well. And again, I really do feel like okay now after the breakup, just to kind of give you guys a little update on that. I feel okay after the breakup. I feel okay in terms of my physical health. I do still have more doctor appointments to go to and stuff, but day to day, my physical health, I feel pretty good. But I still just really need to implement some of these healthier strategies because I don't want to keep like failing my life. I don't want to keep like giving up on myself, which is really hard for me to say because a lot of the times I just don't care. Like a lot of the times I really suffer with bad depression, I just kind of don't care. But logically, like this is one of the things my therapist and I talk about is like sometimes we know things logically. And again, this is what I was saying with motivation, even if you don't feel it, it's still good to implement the healthy things anyway. So even if I don't like really feel like I care about myself right now, it's still healthy to implement the actions as if I do care about myself, you know? So it's, it's a process and you might be someone watching this who's never really struggled with mental health issues and so you might be like, Katie, this is not a big deal. But I know that for some of you or for a lot of you, especially if you really are honest with yourself, there are some things in your life that are not going the way you wanted them to or that really threw you for a loop or that you're using as an excuse to do negative things to yourself. So hopefully we can think about them and work on things as much as we can, even if we don't necessarily feel like it, but we just know that it's what's best. And so I do want to post videos like this being really vulnerable. Again, I'm not going to share everything with you guys, but I want to share struggles with you guys so that we can connect more. And you know, some of you guys I'm sure are going through something similar that you realize that you do have one thing in your life that you're really focused on, but it's not healthy for you or that you're using something to cope that you know is not really the best option. Um, it's hard. It's a struggle. Life is hard, but like doing the things that are really important are generally going to be difficult in some way because they're going to take you out of your comfort zone. They're going to make you think. And uh, a lot of the times the things that make you think and take you out of your comfort zone also are going to be the things that the people around you aren't really doing. And so part of it, you might feel alone. And that's one of the reasons I want to do these videos so that we don't feel as alone when we're going through similar struggles. And so, yeah, so those are some of the coping strategies that I am going to implement to reiterate walking. Um, I did buy a jump rope as well that I think I can do a little bit with my tendonitis, but I'm not sure I got to try it. I don't know if that's going to hurt my tendonitis too much, but I also got little ankle weights that I used the other night when I went on a walk and I think that was good. Um, so on top of that and being outside more, um, and even just like just going, I mean, not during the day now, cause it's like a hundred degrees here during the day now. And I get way too hot, but you like really early in the morning or at night, or if there's a cooler day, just go sit outside for a little while or go sit in the shade or something. I know that I like being outside. Um, and I just for a while didn't care if I did things that I liked. It was almost like I was like punishing myself by doing the unhealthy coping strategies. You know, sometimes we can really get into that low of a depression where it's just like, we don't even care. And that's where the discipline comes in and really, really, really focusing on God. Because even if we don't care about ourselves, God does. So, and I know that's sometimes really hard to remember, but it's true. So on top of the walking, I want to do more arts and crafts, 
with my paints. I'm so excited. I actually might like paint some things and like sell them or give them away or, or something like that. But I think this is going to be really fun and I have the finger paints too. Um, I have books to read. I have my switch to play video games sometimes. Again, not a lot because it does hurt my tendonitis, but if I just do it for like 10 minutes or so, I'm okay. Um, I still have friends here that I can hang out with and do things, you know, that don't involve drinking or don't involve doing something unhealthy or an unhealthy distraction. Um, I have model cars to build. I actually started one a couple weeks ago, but um, I'm going to do that this week. Um, I'm definitely going to read my Bible more, do a devotional more, stay in therapy for sure. And um, yeah, a few things like that. Um, so let me know in the comments what healthy coping strategy you want to start implementing. I would love to hear because then we can all like, you know, like root for each other and cheer each other on. We're all different people, but we can still love each other and support each other and like want the best for each other, you know? Um, so let me know in the comments one coping strategy or a couple that you want to start implementing or that you just started implementing. Um, and if you want to, you can also tell me one that you want to get rid of, you know, that you realized, ah, maybe I'm doing that too much. Maybe I'm like, you know, maybe I'm drinking too much. Maybe I'm eating too many things that make me feel gross. Um, maybe I'm not moving my body enough. Um, maybe I am just lying around all day, even though I know I could do something different, you know? So if you want to, let me know. Just whatever your thoughts are about this and um, we can share with each other and then we can get ideas from each other, which is really cool because again, I don't wanna have too many strategies to overwhelm myself. I think having, you know, five or six for me is good but um, we can all help each other by sharing ideas. So let me know all that in the comments and I really hope that you're subscribed. I do some serious videos like this, but I also do some travel videos and some lighthearted silly videos. I just want to share my life with you. And so I really hope that you're subscribed and following me on Instagram as well. I do a lot of stories and posts and stuff over there. So yeah, I think that's gonna be it. Thank you again for watching and I hope that you guys have a wonderful day. I love you, Jesus loves you, and I'll talk to you later. Bye.